Welcome to Fragmented Pixels. In today's video, I look at the CG work of the film Final Fantasy The Spirits Within with a focus on its main character. Alright, let's get straight into it. Although the film was panned by critics and was a box office failure, what can't be denied was that the CG work despite its flaws, was impressive for 2001 and showcased that CGI films for video games were possible. The film was completed over a four year period, during which approximately 200 people put in a combined 120 years of work on it. In total, the film consists of 141,964 frames. In regards to rendering the project, the basic film was rendered at a custom render farm created by Square in Hawaii, their former studio. It housed 960 workstations. The team also created their own in-house program that was used by the team to help animate the film itself. This software was used to manage hair and cloth simulations and systems. The poly counts for this film were rather impressive for its time. You can see that based on these counts, they wanted to make sure that each element was as smooth as possible, didn't have any jagged lines, and looked smooth on screen. I'm scanning the city for the seventh spirit. How was that one? Was it good? Sure. Thanks. Um, there should be like he's hatching this idea as he's saying. Whoa. Hey guys. All right, let's see how that looks. I'm scanning the city for the seventh spirit. Aki Ross is the main character of this film and you can clearly see she has the most detail, the most animations and the most attention to detail. Aki Ross's appearance was conceived by the lead animator of the project, Roy Sato, going back and forth with Hironobu Sakaguchi, who's actually the director of this film and of course the creator of the Final Fantasy franchise. Aki Ross was meant to be the poster gal for the Square Pictures brand. In interviews, they would say that she was meant to be the main star, but essentially that's a lighter way to say virtual idol. I'm not saying that virtual idols didn't exist back then, but I'm saying you have to think of the time period this was a CGI film for a video game. People didn't really think of that being the case. I think that would have been a foreign thing for people overseas. She even had a pinup spread in Maxim magazine. So you can see that they were trying to go through this virtual idol aspect. But unfortunately, I don't think it stuck with many people at the time. Due to the fact that it was a commercial failure and it ate into Square's finances and they lost a lot of money with this film that got canned and so did the project. It was foreign for a CGI film to be produced for a video game. It's quite serious, it's quite stern. I don't think people were open to that concept yet. Kind of a shame really, but if anything, I feel like this film laid down the blueprint for CGI films in video games because I'm thinking, although they had that blunder, Square Enix did some CGI films for Final Fantasy after that point. It wasn't great for them at the time, but you can see that it did influence them to create future to films that of course were relevant to the Final Fantasy series and universe. The fact this was produced during this time period with limited resources and a lot of terabytes, power, rendering time, it's quite a stellar product. It was a very ambitious film and sometimes when it comes to art you can put everything into something but sometimes you might not get what you put in. If you're interested in CGI work and other factors related to video games, be sure to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.